Okay, hello everybody. I'm Petteri Pyykkö. I'm Anina Kolminen. Hi, hi. And I will be talking about the current weather situation briefly, and she will give an overview of the operational now casting system that we're using at uh, FMI. So first, I will have the um, water vapor image, the 6.2 micron channel. And what's uh, interesting in this image is our uh, probably the uh, jets and the upper level systems we're seeing here, the upper level lows, sorry, uh, the most prominent of them being uh, to the southwest of uh, the Iberian Peninsula uh, and other one over Moldova and southwestern Ukraine. Uh, this uh, eastern one is more a bit more vaguely seen. And uh, as you probably are very familiar with the water vapor images, uh, the brighter hues are for moist air and the blacker and darker regions are, are for dry air. So this also somewhat reveals the location of the jets and uh, of course the dr uh, dry air intrusions in uh, connection with the uh, upper level upper level lows and as we overlay the uh, geopotential height the 500 hectopascal level it will nicely reveal the <coughs> uh, upper level lows as i said southwest of the iberia and uh, over Moldova, and actually the western system uh, near the Iberian Peninsula looks like a cut-up flow, so detached from the main uh, jet stream flow, and uh, the um, upper level trough also is quite quite deep. And you may also um, note uh, the upper level low uh, to the southwest of Iceland which is uh, located uh, in kind of the right spot for the cy cyclonic, for the strengthening of the cyclone and the uh, uh, west exit region of the jet stream. You can see the characteristic cloudiness for the jet over here and the gradient of the geopotential is quite high. So, uh, and I'm talking on the, uh, the Atlantic, so the southwest of Iceland, as I said, and if we then overlay the ice attacks on the, over the same image, you can see the um, jet stream on southwest of Iceland is quite strong. So it's 70, 80, 80 knots. It might be even stronger uh, to the west, but I, uh, it's out of the out of the uh, scope of this image. And uh, the jet stream is meandering over over the continental Europe quite uh, a lot. It's taking the cyclonic turn over the of the uh, west and uh, dips quite down low in south uh, over the I Iberian or to the west of the Iberian Peninsula. And then once again, anti cyclonic turn uh, to upper to higher latitudes. Uh, there is a jet uh, to the west of Norway and over over the southern fen of Scand Scandinavia. And then once again, cyclonic turn in the eastern. Eastern Europe, and here you can also uh, locate. Um, if we actually go back to this one, so uh, in the colder side of the jet over the Atlantic, it reveals the location of the jet stream. And then, if you look at over uh, Sweden and Norway, that's the um, well, the weaker jet stream over there. And then it dips down south, as we saw here the uh, cyclonic turn uh, to lower latitudes towards Greece and, and uh, south of Turkey. And here I have the Hermes image. It's also from today, 6 UTC in the morning. So the brown brownish colors are for the uh, dry, drier air and uh, it reveals nicely the upper upper level lows, the same as we just saw southwest of Iberia and also in the eastern parts of um, uh, Europe. So over Ukraine, Moldova, and you can also see the locations of the jets uh, probably a bit better than using only the water vapor 
image. And here, uh, this uh, image also suffers from the phenomenon called the lime cooling at its, especially at its northern edge. So that means when the um, light traverses, uh, takes takes a longer path through the atmosphere, and uh, certain wavelengths get absorbed, and the resulting color in this uh, Hermes RGB is just purple and blue. And usually, the purple and blue colors are for the colder and ozone-rich air masses, as can be seen in the eastern parts of Europe, um, near the near the upper level low and the brownish brownish color. So there, actually, we we are uh, from the weather models. We can see later. I will have the image uh, that the air mass is colder, so it corresponds to the corresponds to the colder colder air, air masses and down south and uh, over the Mediterranean, the air mass is moister and warmer. So the color for that is green. And of course the clouds, uh, especially the higher clouds are uh, depicted with uh, very bright, bright white colors. And uh, this is probably the last uh, satellite image I have. I took this. <coughs> Some more light. So this uh, nine UTC today, and uh, this uh, product uh, is is good for telling apart the fog or low clouds from the snow covered land. So here uh, the water clouds are shown in pink pink uh, tones and colors, and uh, and the uh, snow over over land or snow ice over land. You can see, for example, in Western Russia, there is uh, no clouds, but there is snow over land. So that would be the grayish, um, grayish sign that we're seeing here. And if we, for example, look at the, the Alps, you can see the little bit brighter sign colors. So that corresponds to the <clears throat> snow and ice over higher mountain tops. And also in the thicker, in case of the thicker ice clouds, the uh, colors Color is a uh, grayish cyan, but it's probably a little, little bit dimmer than in case of the uh, ice and snow over the over the mountains. And as you can see, in over Finnish Scandinavia here, it's quite cloudy, as it has been the case <laughs> over <laughs> recent weeks and months. Uh, there is some. Uh, patches, or it's mostly clearly actually in the mid parts of the country and northern parts of Finland, uh, the sky and Norway, this uh, and Sweden actually too. The uh, this is breaking up, and most parts of mid mid uh, southern Europe, also the southwest, are actually uh, quite clear. And uh, here I have some model data. Uh, so this is like uh, this is the zero zero run from um, today from ECMWF, and it shows the temperature of the air mass. So 850 hectopascals overlaid with the geopotential height at the 500 hectopascals. So. Uh, as we can see, also this, of course, reveals the locations of the um, upper level lows. Sorry, the map size is a bit different. So the southwest of Iberia is quite out of the out of the map, but you can clearly see the uh, eastern one over over Ukraine and uh, the geopotential height. Also, of course, tells about the thickness of the. Uh, the uh, air air column and uh, where it's lower, it's colder, and where it's higher, it's uh, the it uh, corresponds to the warmer air. So under the ridge, um, the high upper level ridge in the western parts of Europe, it's uh, a lot warmer than over the east. Uh, so the eastern parts we see lower geopotential values, and in the west uh, higher higher ones, but if I will take the model forecast from tomorrow, it's also from EC, but it's uh, 12 UTC tomorrow. Remember when I said that the <clears throat> upper level low to the west or southwest of Iceland is uh, in the right position. 
for the strengthening of the cyclone. So that is exactly what's uh, most likely is going to happen. So it's actually deepening quite rapidly, and this is the upper upper field. Also, we can see the strengthening in the uh, mean level surface surface pressure, but uh, but it's it's not shown here. And we also see some uh, warm advection to the central parts of Europe. And uh, the cyclone, well, the cyclone in the um, upper, sorry, upper level low, and also the cyclone is is um, just advecting east eastwards, especially the upper level feature is not uh, strengthening or weakening substantially. And also, what happens here, the you can see the uh, trough digging and the leeward side of the of the Scandi mountains so to the between between Sweden and uh, Finland oh sorry yeah I had this more uh, what all this here so I uh, there there was this uh, nice overpass today in the morning from the polar satellite this is the day microphysical RGB uh, from uh, ABHRR instrument. So here, uh, different colors tell different information about the um, microphysical properties of clouds. So whenever we see these um, olive green colors, it's uh, mostly the low level or mid level water cloud with smaller are uh, water particles. And if it's um, if the particles get a bit bigger, the uh, color coding turns towards salmon red, kind of. So that would be in the eastern parts of Finland, the number one. And uh, when it's very red, that's the thick ice clouds with large ice particles, as we can see in the number two. Uh, over Ukraine, for example, also you can see that. Um, kind of in the northern parts of Sweden uh, to the east of southern parts of Sweden, but the, especially in northern parts of Sweden, the colors get a bit distorted because it's in the near the edge of the imaging swath. And number four uh, is for the snow and ice on the ground, and this very good product uh, for distinguishing bit also for distinguishing between the clouds and the snow on the ground because it gets a very nice uh, color and the ice uh, and snow over the mountains is even more well, purple and then uh, I'm not sure but I would put this number five on this thick ice cloud, the small ice particles on top. Uh, so whenever there are small ice particles on top of the those clouds, the color turns more towards orange. And I know there are there's convection expected in this region later today, but I'm not sure if this particular cloud is just upper upper cloud with the larger particles or if it's really a nice cloud with the with the um, smaller particles on top but if somebody wants to look later so you could take a look uh, well actually now or a bit in a few few hours when the convection has developed so you would probably see the orange orange uh, colors because of the convection over there and I will uh, Sorry, I will finish with the uh, ECMWF temperature anomaly and the surf, uh, surface pressure anomaly. So uh, for the next week, the anomaly seems to be uh, warm over many parts of Europe, mid-Europe a bit weaker anomaly and Eastern Europe uh, a bit higher certainty for a warm anomaly and towards the west as we have this low pressure system and a trough and geopotential likely next week we will have colder weather expected and then the same story goes for iceland and norway most parts of norway and sweden 
and also northern Finland. And this corresponds quite nicely to the forecast uh, surface pressure anomaly. So uh, the uh, green colors are for uh, lower pressure than average, and the purple ones are for higher. So with this uh, pressure field, on average, we would have uh, more southerly or southwesterly flow uh, in mid parts of Europe, and also possibly in, in East, Eastern Europe. And anyway, the anomaly was uh, with higher probability towards warmer temperature, though. So this quite nicely matches to the forecast, especially in the uh, in the west. I would say because the uh, um, the likelihood for uh, lower than average pressures over the over the west, especially over the Br British Islands, is very high. But yeah, that that's it for my presentation, and I will take I will give the floor to Anina. Yeah. So as mentioned earlier, I'm Anina Korpinen, and uh, I work in FMI as this sort of uh, data related expert. I'm uh, developing different kind of na uh, casting tools as well as machine learning methods and uh, I'm building production pipeline and do the all kind of technical things. I also have background of forecasting uh, or weather forecasting. I did that a couple of years. <clears throat> That's why I have, it's really interesting to develop these sort of forecasting tools for forecasting even though I'm not doing this operational forecasting anymore. Okay, uh, in Finnish Meteorological Institute, we have this uh, uh, now casting system, which we are calling uh, Smart Met Nowcast. It's uh, fully automated, so it updates uh, every hour, and uh, it's based on the more or less uh, observed, observed data combined with the model data. Uh, the forecast is uh, including the first 12 hours of our official forecast. Uh, the resolution of the data is uh, 2.5 kilometers and uh, its uh, uh, time step is one hour. And there is uh, approximately uh, 30 minutes delay from the observation time uh, before we get to data to customers. Uh, in this example of our uh, forecast in the figure, in, in here, we have this uh, uh, red square area, and that is describing the now casting time length. So, all those times that are the operational now casting system. Um, it uh, changed to be, or it's automated in uh, autumn uh, 2021. And the, one of the main reasons for doing that was to improve the accuracy of the forecast and uh, reduce the delay of getting the observation or analysis data to the customers. And also, uh, it was required before quite a lot of manual work for the forecasters. So then it was like when the automa automation was done, it eases or make the <clears throat> forecasting work easier for the forecasters. So there is all kind of benefits by to do that. Automated system. If you have anything to uh, anything to ask at any point, please do ask it or write in the um, chat section. But uh, for the chat, I probably can are able to read it in the end of the uh, presentation. Okay. So this is a uh, in this figure. I'm trying to explain what sort of data we have in our now casting system. Uh, this is actually describing the whole operation of forex data, what we are producing in FMI, which is uh, this uh, bar, the lowest bar of the figure. Uh, but for the now casting data, we have this uh, observation from the uh, zero hour of the forecast. And those uh, observations are with different methods, they are blended or gridded to the model grid. Uh, then we have different methods to generate this. Uh, from uh, five to four hour now casting, which are also based on the observation data. And uh, we use also like pure uh, now casting model, which is co called the MetCoop now cast. And it's a uh, uh, model developed this uh, MetCoop organization, which we are 
calling maps. Well, the model is called maps, and the Naukast model is, is called uh, MNWC. <coughs> um, we use uh, different data sources, and we are blending those sources together to generate this 12 hour forecast, even though the data. Uh, different data source might be shorter than 12 hours, but our nowcast is always uh, for each different parameters. It's always 12 hours, 12 hours long. And it's as I mentioned earlier, this data is always updated every hour. Um, then short mention about this uh, input data that we are using in the, our now cache system. Uh, we have the observation data. We use uh, different point of observations. I think mainly uh, sign of stations. From there we get the uh, temperature data, relative humidity, wind speed, and wind gust. And for the two meter temperature, we get we use also data from the net atmosphere stations. Uh, but there is uh, because it's not. Uh, Official data of FMI, there is more and uh, maybe I would say more brutal quality control. So we are actually not necessarily using all the data, is the quality is not good enough for us. Uh, then we use this uh, different uh, remote, remote sensing data in Finland case because we are quite far away in satellite observation area. So really north corner in that we use the radar information. So we have this radar based now casting system for one hour accumulation precipitation and the precipitation intensity. For that resolution is one kilometer and for a cast length of this now cast is four hour. And then for one product, we use uh, EUMET, EUMET uh, and VSSOF uh, effective cloudiness data to generate uh, uh, total cloud cover for a cast. <coughs> And we have we are also using the flash observation information of the uh, flash strikes. And in this figure, there is an example of this uh, Chinop station network, and there is a map of the bias correction of the temperature. And uh, because our now casting system is. Uh, more or less based of the model data. Uh, then we are, of course, using the model data also, not only the observation ones. Uh, for the now casting input data, as I mentioned, it's a met group now casting. Uh, so it's uh, like the, the main data or as main backup data of every system. And most of the data is like a, Eventually, it's going to be a kind of like pure metcoop nowcast data because the forecast link for some of the products are shorter than 12 hours. <clears throat> but it's producing once in hour this uh, uh, 1.2 kilometer resolution data, and the forecast of metcoop nowcast is 12 hours, and output is 15 minutes. And this uh, actually turned to be operational only like uh, autumn. Uh, 22. So it, ha it has been quite a long time before that uh, in developing state, but now it has been one and a half year already been in operational status. And that is uh, in this figure, there is example of the coverage of the smart met nowcast area. So we are actually generating nowcast data for whole Scandinavia and a bit more area. And now I have this. Uh, more or less complicated figure of the whole pipeline or now casting a flow shot. I don't think I'm going to go so into detail with this. Uh, in the left side, we have uh, all the parameters that are automated in our system. So we have total cloud cover, two meter temperature, relative humidity, 10 meter wind speed and wind gust, one hour accumulation precipitation, one hour precipitation intensity and probability of thunder. In this figure, uh, if we have these more rounded boxes, uh, that is describing the source uh, source data. And then we, if we have this more uh, square box, 
that is describing different methods which we are using. So we have a <coughs> uh, same uh, source of observation and model data as I have been already describing. We are using uh, different methods for generating the now casts. We have this uh, for the uh, radar data we use it, are using PyStep to generating now casting for that. For the uh, total cloud cover, we are using this uh, uh, neural network uh, forecast model to generate five hours total cloud cover forecast uh, for the uh, temperature, wind speed, wind cost, and relative humidity. We are using this machine learning bias core correction, which is uh, I will come to that later, but correcting the all 12 hours forecast. And for probably a thunder, we are using this uh, uh, thundercast, which is creating a four hour forecast for the probability of thunder. And basically, all these data data are blended together, generating the different now casting, which are once again blended together with the Metcoop now cast data. And eventually, we are getting our 10 days operational, official operational forecast data, and that is put to the database. So, the now cast of our system is always uh, blended together to this uh, 10 days official forecast. So, you can't, from our database, it's really difficult to get all your now cast data out. <clears throat> okay, and I will briefly mention. Uh, some details of different parameters. So, for this uh, Synop station observation data, we are using gradient boost random forest regression machine learning methods, and it's correcting uh, lead time from 0 to 12, so whole no casting period. Uh, this is actually improvement done uh, last autumn, so beforehand it, the system was correcting only first four hours of the no cast, and then it's uh, Change to be actually the official uh, official uh, FMI data, so forecasters could be were able to edit it after that. But now it's automated for twelve hours. And uh, the, for the machine learning model, there has been uh, three de three years of the data used for the training, uh, and it's going it's training for the uh, point data. And then it's like uh, the uh, point data information is uh, then used for the whole model grid. So we are not uh, forecasting only for the points, but for, we are forecasting for the whole model grid. And then we have, uh, this is only product which is uh, anything to do with the satellite data, total cloud cover. Uh, we are using, as I mentioned before, uh, effective cloudiness, which is uh, coming from the NVC SAF, which is EUMET SAF um, tool. And this is generating five hour now, now cast for a cast. You can see in this figure, this uh, uh, bottom five row, bottom row figs are from the cloud, um, uh, from Cloudcast. And this uh, upper row is from the um, Metcoop now cast model, so pure model data. And uh, what we actually get from our our own developer uh, cloud uh, cloudcast product, we get a, a, bet, a better description of the uh, cloud cover itself. Uh, this is actually one of the high resolution nowcast parameter which we are uh, generating in FMI. Even though our Naukas system is all updated only one hour and time set is one hour, we are like picking this like each individual hour to our, our Naukas system. Uh, there has been some issues with the effective cloud, uh, cloudiness uh, source data because we are so far away in north of point of view of the satellite or uh, geostational satellite. So there is a bit issues of these like shadows of the frontal systems or uh, in winter time uh, for system making difference are uh, do we have really shallow low level cloud or do we have only like clear sky with the uh, snow in the ground 
that has been causing all kind of issues. <clears throat> but let's see what is going to happen when we get this like new generation of the satellite data. We have also uh, a precipitation now cast, which is uh, based off the satellite uh, uh, radar data, but only in Finland. So we, because in Finland our radar system or network is uh, homogeneous, so all the uh, radars are kind of like similar, but in the Scandinavian area it's not the truth. So in the Scandinavian area we are using the pure medical broadcast data, but from Finland we have been masking Finland off and putting the radar radar data in there, so combining those. And uh, actually what we get there is that uh, the radar information is a bit better getting this like convective events, even though there is a bit of uh, problems also with convection, especially in summertime. And that is pointed out in this like figure, uh, low row, fifth figure, there is this red circle pointing out this like convective area and figure about, about that, which is from uh, SmartMed Nowcast, you can see that there is not enough uh, convective precipitation in this forecast. But that is quite common issue in, issue in many institutes or meteorological institutes also. Uh, then we have the probability of thunder. Now cast, which we are calling Thundercast. Uh, it's starting from generating this kind of analysis field based on the thunder strike uh, in a, a different time window. So we have this like near uh, by observations, which is from uh, previous 20 minutes. And then we have this bit older observation, which are from last uh, 40 minutes, and they are getting different value for the probability. And when we get this, or when we have been generating this analysis field, we can calculate also using metcoop nagat precipitation rate areas. We can calculate the motion vector field, and when we have the information of the uh, motion, we can generate this uh, four-hour forecast of the. So we are like uh, moving the analysis field within the motion vector field. And then we are getting this 50, uh, four hour of an August in the 15 minutes time steps. And there is also issue of the, within the convection. So the system is currently not producing any convection. And that is something we are currently focusing on to improve the system. And for this shorter period of now casting, we are combining those or blended them to uh, met group now casting. So all the parameters are always 12 hours long, even though the data source is changing during the way. <clears throat> okay, and now we are at the summary point. So uh, I think the main things for this presentation is to uh, get this like uh, small information about the SmartMed Nowcast, uh, its details, how long it's, how long it's last and when it's updating, how often, what is time steps. With that, uh, we are currently producing kind of like basic parameters, like temperature, wind speed, and gust, and it's sort of like a, where the observation are quite important for the for the Nargast forecast. Uh, the solar system is automated, and we have been using different kind of methods to actually generate different individual parameters. And the motivation has been, of course, getting more or better forecast, but also uh, make forecasting easier for the forecasters themselves. And uh, as I mentioned, we currently have this kind of like, uh, uh, we have this like basic requirement satisfied currently, but uh, of course we want to get more parameters and there is all kind of discussion for generating something new. And uh, I think myself personally see quite a good opportunity to develop something to forecast on August fog with the satellite information when we get this new generation of satellites and maybe a bit better resolution with that. 
also in here in north north of Europe. Uh, thank you. That was my part of the presentation today.